Hello, hi everyone. All right, welcome to our uh, Friday, Aloha Friday video podcast from the Ho'okele department. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have an awesome guest that will be joining us here shortly. We're grateful to all of you that are tuning in and thank you so much for joining us this Friday, another Friday from our BYU alumni Ho'okele department video podcast. So just a couple of things before before we bring on our guests. Um, you know, some people, uh, as we were doing the podcast in the last um, month or two, they were asking, uh, what does a ho'okele mean? So for those of you, just a reminder, ho'okele is, uh, is a Hawaiian word means to navigate. So in our department, we have all sorts of different areas that helps the students navigate their BYU Hawaii experience when they come. So we have student recruitment, that we, we meet with the students out there on the road, whether it's in the uh, Pacific or Asia or here in Hawaii, or even in the mainland. So we meet with them, talk about BYU Hawaii, and then uh, you know we help them with the admissions process. And once they get admitted, they come here and go through our new student orientation program. And then after that, while well, they get admitted and get registered for classes along the way, they also connect with our financial aid office, as well as our um, International Student Services Office that works with the visas and all those international documents just to make sure everything is in order. So once they get here to BYU, help, uh, Hawaii, we help them with those kind of things. And while there is student here, our Career Services Office helps them in making sure they have the resources uh, to help them with internships and start networking with employers and all these opportunities to practice like resume writing, mock interview uh, practice and skills, those kind of things to prep them before they move forward uh, after school here. So once they're done with school, then we continue to work with our students through the alumni relations area to make sure that they're able to uh, connect through our Ohana network and be able to have their information. So when they leave as an alumni of BYU Hawaii, as well as Church College of Hawaii, and then we make sure that they get into the system to connect with other alumni or to uh, provide uh, mentoring opportunities to our students and others that come uh, come after them. So that's the work that we do in the whole Kelly department. So we see the life cycle of the students from the very beginning, from the uh, student recruitment as we meet them in, out on the road, all the way until they graduate and become alumni of BYU Hawaii. So that's the services that we provide. Okay. All right. We're going to bring on our special guest uh, uh, today. And if you have any comments that you want to share with us during the uh, podcast or have any questions for our guests, you can go ahead and type that in. And uh, let's see, this way, this way. Yeah, it's right there on that side. You'll be able to see it and then you'll be able to put in your comments. And we have Becky. Um, helping us as well as our students to keep an eye on those comments and any questions that you may have for our guests. So without any further ado, we're going to bring in the man of the hour, Mr. Ed Tano. Hello, Aloha, Ed. Aloha, Aloha. 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 How's it? How's it? There we go. So good to have you with uh, with us today, Ed. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing a lot of uh, good information as well as uh, some of your stories and journeys while you were here at Church College of Hawaii. So before we get started, I'm just going to give you a minute or two to kind of introduce yourself a little bit, uh, where you grew up and those kind of things. And then uh, we'll go from there. How's that? Mm, good. Okay. So it's all yours. Okay, uh, aloha everybody. Uh, thank you for this uh, rare opportunity to represent the school that made me who I am today, the BYU Hawaii campus or CCH. My name is Ed Tano. I uh, was born in Waialua, raised in Waihua, went to Lelehua High School, not an honor student though, but I graduated. I uh, am an Air, I'm an Air Force veteran. I served the mission and uh, 
Arizona in the Southwest Indian Mission under Presidents Taylor and Dale Tingey. I enrolled at uh, CCH many years ago. Uh, I believe over 50 years ago, <laughs> I was there. And uh, I think uh, I'm grateful because uh, CCH was a school that accepted me. Uh, I don't think any other school would have accepted me. Uh, <laughs> I was accepted on probation in the first place. <laughs> I'm so grateful that there was a school in this world that would accept a person like me, to give me a chance to right. get an education. So for that, I'm forever grateful. Well, that's great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ed, for sharing that brief uh, introduction about yourself. So I think what we're going to do is kind of go through uh, the, the slideshows, the pictures that you shared with us and be able to, you know, talk about some of those things. And uh, I have some notes from our meeting a couple of days ago, and then I'll just pop in and out and we can share and, you know, just casually, you know, hanging out, talking story kind of thing and be able to share some of the things that you you've done in the past. Is that okay? Uh, bigger, yeah, good. All, all right, so here we go. So here's a nice photo of this good man, Ed Tano. Uh, and I told Ed, man, he looks like uh, that movie star, uh, what's his name, Charles Bronson, or I think it's uh, is his name. I said, wow, that guy is a handsome looking guy. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you sent us that uh, photo. So. Tell us about this photo and uh, what time of uh, what time was that around your life? I think it was in the nineties. I think I don't know. You know, nineteen okay. nineties when I had a mustache. But uh, <laughs> the reason why I and the, the reason why I saved my mustache because I, I told my friend there's a native tradition that when somebody loses a a loved one of the family. You do something to respect it. So I said, I'm going to shave. So from that time forth, uh, I've never had a mustache. Oh. Even, yeah. Yeah, good, good. That's a nice photo. It's really nice. Thanks. Next, that was a long time ago. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> that was a long time ago. Yeah, no. <laughs> See, that's why these pictures will always come back to haunt you. Huh? You never know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Okay, so this next photo, tell us a little bit about this time. I know you were talking, you mentioned about being in the military in your early years. So this is an interesting story that you shared with me. Well, I, this is uh, up in uh, Plattsburgh, New York, way upstate, Lake, uh, next to Lake Champlain. I was actually 18 years old by the time I, I was sworn in at 17, which people never heard of, but I was sworn in at 17 I, because I took the Air Force test, although uh, I didn't want to join the Air Force. All I wanted was a pass back to school the next day. But uh, because I, and I was guessing through the whole test, uh, <laughs> I passed. So I was, uh, I, I didn't know what was going on until the major came in and he was talking. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I, all I wanted is a pass back to school. And then he told us to, uh, the sergeant says, change up to your student attention. And he asked, the major said, raise your right arm. And he was talking about the Air Force. And he, then he said, congratulations, you're now in the United States Air Force. <laughs> said, Me too. No, yeah, we all, we all pass the test. So, no, was, this, was this right after uh, you finished at Lelehua High School? Is that correct? Yeah, I graduated. Yeah, I had to turn 18 before I could go in. Oh, OK. OK. It's in July, so I actually was 18 at that time. OK, so you were up there in New York. Yeah, uh, you were sworn in and all of that. And then you also mentioned you participated in the uh, Hilcomora pageant. That's pretty cool that you were in a pageant up there. Uh, that was 1962 or 63. I was in the Hilcomora pageant. I, I went down with the missionaries and uh, you just watched the pageant. And um, the director was a guy named Brother Hansen at that time. And okay. he, he paid it to, to, to me to be one of the Nephite captains. You know, on the Black Liberty, yeah, so yeah. All the five <laughs> and the missionaries who drove me down were had parking lot duty. <laughs> wow! So they were mad at me, sort of. But yeah, uh -huh. I was there, I was there in Sacred Grove. Went to the Joseph Smith home, and uh, I still have a leaf from that from the Sacred Grove. Very, very wow. surreal. That's really cool. 
That's that's really cool. That's nice. It's a good story to have. So you were up there for a little while till 1965, you said, and then then you came to go to school. Is that correct? Yeah, I was in um, New York for two years, and then I went to Turkey. Oh, okay. During the Greek Cyprus, uh, the Greek Turkish uh, conflict, we were we were caught in the middle, and so you know the funny thing is we go on alert, we lock and load, and we're told. If they fire, don't fire back. <laughs> What's that, man? I'm there. Oh my gosh! But anyway, uh, it, it, it blew over, so everything's okay now. Yeah. Okay. But after the the thing about the military is, um, before the military, um, my teachers never encouraged me to go to college. In fact, I was told I would never go to college. Even wow. the counselor, the, the the school. Even my own family said, you know, college is, is not your not your thing. So I, I took it as that. So I think, okay, I'll just be I'll just be a truck driver, <laughs> something I can do. Okay. But I joined the Air Force, I joined the Air Force and this lieutenant, I st I still talk to him today. He was a lieutenant at the time and he's our football team quarterback and he told me before I left to go overseas. And he, he was a Notre Dame graduate. He graduated at 19 years old in engineering. And he told wow. me, I walked out, going to walk out of his office. He says, Airman, I want you to do yourself a favor. I said, what's that, sir? He said, I want you to go to college, get an education. And I said, sir, I can't. I, I can't. I, I don't, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not smart enough. He says, you can and you will. Just find something you like to study. And so I got out in 65 I uh, took the test in August, you know, CCH. Yeah. In those days, they give you entrance exam. And so I took the entrance exam, turned it in. I get a letter back. It says, dear, me, my name, we're sorry to inform you. I thought, oh, boy. <laughs> oh, I have to read the rest. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I know what it's going to say, right? So I just crumpled it up and threw it in a trash can. And said, there goes my college and all. And that's all mm -hmm. I said, told me. But you didn't read the rest of the letter, so I took it out and read it. And the last paragraph says, however, if you still want to attend college, write a one-page essay in the back of this letter. <laughs> that you crumbled up. <laughs> I had to smooth it out, you know, and write. The, the, thing, the thing about me is, is, is this, and I, I'm not trying to perpetuate myself, but I can spell and I can write. Uh -huh. In fact, in high school, I was a spelling bee champ. Wow. You know, the teacher was trying to punish me to make me study. So, so, but I didn't study, and I, I beat everybody. But anyway, <laughs> right, and I can spell, but anything else, don't ask me to do that. So uh, I wrote a nice essay, and I said, during the military, we're mission-oriented. It's not, it's not about academics, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to do yeah. your very specific, what are you going to do, and you do it the best you can, and you don't say why, or you don't ask why. You just say yeah. it. And so got accepted. And the second letter came by and said, Dear Edwin, we we're pleased to let you know. Hey, wow, now I'm going to read the rest, right? Yeah. The paragraph says, However, <laughs> you'll be put on probation. You <laughs> One day we'll, we will terminate you. So, oh, wow, okay, yeah. So. Wow, that's, that's, a, that's a really interesting So It brings us to the next picture. So. <laughs> The next photo here on the slide. Hey. <laughs> there we go. That's the troop right there. So tell us about this picture. Is this at CCH at that time, Church College of Hawaii? That is the Church College of Hawaii. I've even got the pin here on my, on my lapel. Oh, my goodness. On the so lawn. What is, this, what is this picture? 1970. Okay. It's the tree by the, by the cafeteria. As you come out of the cafeteria. Okay. Going towards the dorms, it's a tree. Oh, we already cut that tree down, so sorry about that. <laughs> it's a famous tree, man. But uh, yeah, I was student body president, and uh, you know, I, I, Dave Smoot was a student body uh, advisor, and his oh. was the one that baptized us years ago. Oh, Smoot from Centerville, Utah. So because of that, I knew Dave Smoot, you know, we got to know him. And he he called me one day. He said, "You need to run for office." I said, "Hey." Those were like that's that's for guys who are very intelligent, you know, you know, yeah. skinny neck, glasses, and smart, and carry computers. 
I said, uh, that's not for me, man. He says, no, I think you should run for office. I said, well, in those days, there was five vice presidents and secretary treasurer, you know. So I said, well, yeah. I'll go for secretary then. I'll take the easy one. He says, you crazy? That's the worst one to take, the secretary. What's said, why? You got to be at every meeting. You, you're working. <laughs> said, well, what's the easiest one then? then? He says, to tell you the truth, the easiest one is the president. Really? I said, why? He says, you just tell people what to do. He says, you're... I was better than I was old. You, you're 25 years old, 26 years old. You can't, you, you were in the military. You told people what to do. I said, yeah, I did. So I said, just give the orders and make sure they do it. Said, okay. And then, then he says, you need to have a campaign committee. And I said, what's that? He says, it's the people that help you get elected. So I go back to my dorm, right? Dorm three, there's eight of us. So I say, hey guys, I need your help. So they was, yeah, we'll help. what's up, man? We'll help you. I said, I gotta make posters. What for? Running for what? Running for office. What office? Student body president. <laughs> All laughed and walked away. Wow. <laughs> oh, dude, that's, that's a good one. You can find a better one than that. They didn't believe you, yeah? They didn't believe me. <laughs> I still had to make my posters, right? So I, I need paper. So I go to the Laia grocery store. I go see the butcher. And now they're like, hey, how's it about that? Hey, I need, I need 10 feet of butcher paper. 10 feet? You're going to buy the whole pig, man? I said, no. I got to make posters. Posters for what? I said, for student body office, you know, running for office. Who? I am. What office are you running for? Student body president. He laughs and said, come on, Tom. If you want the paper, just tell me. Don't don't, don't give me that. It's a good story. Said, That's for real, man. Wow. So I made five posters, you know, two feet each. Then I go to the library, okay? To get old magazines like Sports Illustrated, because I was going to cut out famous stars that say, like Michael Irvin says, vote for Tana, you know. So I go to the library, ask for old magazines, and the guy, the little someone guy with the glasses, Epinia or something. Anyway, he asked what why I need it for. I said, Well, I need it because I'm for my I'm gonna make posters for for, for what? I'm, I'm running for office. <laughs> So I said, student body president, he begins to laugh. I said, Tom, that's not your stuff, man. If you want magazine, just tell me, I'll give it to you. I said, oh, for real, I need it. So, okay, give me a bunch. So I made my posters. And then of, uh, I can't put it up during the daytime, right? Because people are going to laugh. I want to do it at night when nobody's around. I'm putting up my posters, and I see a flashlight. Security. Hey, who's that? It's me. Tom, what are you doing here, man? I said, I'm putting up my posters. Hey, he says, you better not be taking down posters. That's vandalism. I said, no, I'm not taking it down. I'm putting mine up. For what? Look, student body president, he begins to laugh. He says, come on, man. You just want to sabotage the election. I said, no, it's for real. <laughs> I got to put it up sometime because if I put it up during the daytime, they're just going to laugh and just whatever. So, wow. that, Yeah. That's a that's a great story. You know how you got in, involved in student uh, student body and all that, and then all of that uh, also allowed you to participate in other things. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's a groundbreaking for the Aloha Center, right? Though, today. Yeah. So you were involved in the groundbreaking for the Aloha Center <laughs> before the event was built. Yeah. Huh? I was a grunt. I dug every. I had to hand shape every footer in that building. Wow. The backhoe would come in and dig, and I had to shape it to tolerance. Wow. Oh, the grunt, man. That, that was, but the good thing is that made me tell, talk to myself. One day I knelt down and I said to myself, mm-hmm. you pay you a lot, but this is not my life, man. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay in school and graduate. <laughs> oh, that's so good. It was a good experience. Yeah, to my yeah. right is, uh, is my old bishop. And to, to uh, two guys to my right is the student body president. Uh, president, uh, uh, what's his name? <laughs> President Cook. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow, that's pretty. That's pretty good. This is a good picture of all the different things that you were involved in. That's awesome. I think we'll see another picture later um, with you being um, as a student body president as well. Um, we also have a picture here of you and your your wife. That's. Uh, you know what year that was, then? Uh, there was, uh, I don't know, 
That was, that was in Kauai at my sister's house. Oh. Uh, that was back in the day when, you know, younger days, but that's my dear wife. Uh, uh, I like her because she's just plain, <laughs> beautiful, good person. Uh, but I didn't know her during my mission. I wasn't one of those missionaries who went back, you know. Uh huh. In fact, remember I told you, in fact, uh, in one of our district meetings, people would, Elders were talking about, you know, if they're going to go back to the rest, you know, and a lot of them say, yeah, I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back. And when it was my turn, they said, well, but you got a lot of time. You're coming back. I said, hey, you know, due respect, man, I ain't coming back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a local boy from Hawaii. I mean, that's my home. But wow. the matter was, I'm the only one ever came back. <laughs> <laughs> the only yeah, one, really, the only one ever came back. That's a good story, dear. You're the only one that went back to uh, your mission after you left, yeah? Yeah, 50 yeah. years. Wow. Okay, so this next picture is uh, graduation. 1972, is that right? Uh, when you Yes, sir. Started. That's a miracle, man. I mean, that's the... I don't, I don't know about any other people, but, you know, for me to graduate from college was something. It was a very mm. moment for me. And I graduated cum laude. Wow. I got one C for algebra. <laughs> <laughs> In my no, whole no. life, I'm going to take one algebra class and one statistics class. But uh, no, yeah, that's no, a moment. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, that's good. Wow. That's a great accomplishment, Ed. It's really good. But the church college made it possible. I, I give credit to them, to the professors, and also to, to the environment of the school. It's small, so you almost know everybody. You know, you walk out your dorm, it's hey, how's it? you know, you you already know everybody. You don't you don't walk past by anybody. Yeah, it's it's like home, in other words. Small yeah. classes, good attention, you know. Yeah, kind of like Waiwa, yeah. Yeah, like Waiwa. Only thing, uh, Waiwa had more uh, beef. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good, good. That's a nice one. That's a nice picture. This next one is really a nice, it's a cool picture of you and uh, President Gordon B. Hinckley. Uh, when was that and what was the occasion? Do you remember? Yeah, the occasion was um, when I was a state president, in the oh. first Italy state president, see? Uh, the, there was a troop of us, a uh, group, uh, the Navajo Nation president, Kelsey Begay, and some of his staff and some other people met with the prophet in his office up in the church office building. Wow. Just to set the tone for, we, we needed more um, mission sites, you know, to build chapels. Mm -hmm. A Nav Navajo reservation is federal land. Nobody owns land. You live on it forever, but you right. never own it because it's the government uh, property. Right. So in order to build a any type of church chapel, it's the person's goodness of their heart will say, okay, they don't have to. And so we invited the, the Navajo Nation president. I came I came up, came up with my former mission president, Dale Tingi, who knew Kelsey Begay very well, to kind of set, to kind of ease the discussion in the, in the tribal council, you know, when it comes time for to lease a uh, building for a church site, you know, mm -hmm. give us some type of consideration. So that was the purpose of that uh, meeting with uh, President Hinckley. And during that meeting, um, I sat with him and um, one of his counselors. Um, and then they asked me, uh, President, what are two things you would like, what can we do? You name two things. And I said, number one, I would like to see the language being brought back because the language is is a is a sense of connectivity. It's a sense mm -hmm. of connecting spiritual and physical together. Mm -hmm. It's a sense of respect for the person to whom you're speaking with. You 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 acknowledging their sacredness. The language is very powerful. You know, like, you know, like fa sa mo, right? Yeah, yeah. We speak English, we call it grab, but it's good to say. You know, it's good to say, it. you, feel good, you know, you feel like, man, Paulo Sami, man. <laughs> and then another thing I said, it would be great to have a mission home 
on the reservation. Mm. Missionaries can be can receive orientation on how to best work with the Navajo people. You know, find a fit that will, when we go to the Navajo homes, we won't go in there as I'm better than you and my religion is best. See, because some missionaries were doing that. You know, they were told mm -hmm. your tradition is whatever. I believe you should, you should never say that. I've never said that to them. Yeah. Because everybody has tradition, you know? Yeah. They came from the Buddhist tradition, my dad from the Catholic tradition, but the missionaries never did put, put it down. And I like what Elder Neil Maxwell said. If somebody has respect for some form of deity, appreciate it because that's their foundation already. Right. Don't say, well, you're wrong. Say, I'm, I appreciate that you have respect, respect for something, uh, uh, something that is sacred. Right. I can add something to you if you want to. This is what I, this is what I have to add upon what you have. So they can think about it anyway and let the Holy Ghost do the work. Right. Missionary, what's this? Wow. Oh, that's good. I remember in our conversation that, uh, you know, from this uh, story that you just shared, as well as the callings you've had, uh, you had mentioned that you served as state president twice. Consecutively, it was yeah, the, the first two stakes ever created on the reservation was me, and I was told by the, by the uh, general authorities that the, it, it was the first two two uh, independent native stakes in North America. Wow! And uh, I, I can't believe it, but. Uh, there were some very lonely moments when I had to come, come all the way back home, <laughs> driving on highways in the dark, going over the mountains, dirt roads, muddy. I could have slipped off. I could have gone into a ditch. Yeah. I always made it back home safely. And sometimes one o'clock in the morning, you know, and go to work yeah. the day. And, but I did it for 10 years and my office was 75 miles away, not down the street like here in Utah. Yeah. 75 miles away for 10 years, a meeting every other Saturday at seven o'clock. So and you I, said you served as stake president in Chinle Stake first? Yes. And when you were released, they asked you to serve as stake president? Released by yeah. Elder Jack, yeah. I was released by Gene R. Cook. He shook my hand, no, president, you release. He put his arm around, but you will accept being a president of the Tuba City, Arizona State, won't right. you? <laughs> well, he got, he got me, man. He got my hand here. He got my hand. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> and well, then he so said- 75 miles the other way. Yeah, really, They're exactly, because I was in the center of Chin Lee and Tuba City. Yeah. yeah. So wow. it was very, very demanding, but, uh, you know, uh, something the Lord provides. Yeah. And I learned this. My mom told me this. When I, when I called my mother, when I called my mother, she did not say, I'll call everybody and let them know. So they would, everybody would be proud of you. You know, sometimes people, I'm not saying it's wrong, okay? Yeah, yeah. People, big call for a certain calling, the whole family shows up, you know? <laughs> My mother was going for surgery the very same night, that, that the Saturday. But she, she did tell me this. She said, now you're really going to learn. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna learn that there's a God that's smarter than you. Wow. And she said, and she was going in for surgery. The whole family was in Hawaii because it was, was she could have died in the surgery. Everybody but me because I didn't go because the next day was my very first state conference. So I called my mom, right? I said, mom, I like to come home because it's, it's a heart surgery too. Uh -huh. And she's 80 something years old. And the doctor, did, and I mean, doctor said, you know, your chances are Kind of slim. So, I, so I'm thinking, what shall I do? So I call my mom. Mom, what shall I do? And this is the advice of a loving mother. She didn't cry and say, please come home, son. I might die. You know, I'm old. She did say, you stay there, sir. How can you 
leave the God over there and come home and pray to the same one. Yeah, yeah. You know, to help me. Yeah, you yeah, stay yeah. there and serve. And, and then she said this, and if I mock you, right? <laughs> if I mock you, if I die, she said, so what? No worry. That's why we went temple. Oh, to this so day, I remember that. And that made me feel I could be strong even if whatever happened. Yeah. But she survived it. I called her and uh, I called the hospital to see, talk to a lady. And then the guy says, Oh, the lady, they're walking around. <laughs> she was walking around. Yeah. <laughs> She's walking around. I just had surgery. <laughs> but uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yeah. everything's in the Lord's hands, you know? Yes. I, I believe that. Yeah, exactly. He'll take care of your family as long as you yeah. do what he asks you to do. Yeah. So yeah and my mom, and my mom knew me that, you know. I wasn't always the one to behave, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we talked uh, a little bit about that as well. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, I want to make sure we have some time to talk about your work there in the reservation with the, okay. with the students in education. But I'm going to move through uh, a little quick on these slides. Um, we have a picture of, uh, are these your counselors from the presidency? Yeah, the one to my right is my first counselor, uh, Ray Mitchell from Tuba City, and he lived 100 miles from the stake center. Wow. The one to my left is Dan Smith. He lived right in town. Okay. But every time we had a, 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 a stake presidency meeting, Mitchell was the first one in the parking lot. Okay, wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's 150 miles away. Yeah, you mentioned you put a lot of miles in your car. What, uh, two cars and four <laughs> engines or something like that, you said? Yeah, had to rebuild the engine, had to buy a new car, I had to buy other cars, you know, and yeah. I went through a car because a 10,000 square mile stake. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of miles. I remember working for Eastern Arizona College and I traveled the reservation. It was, it was far apart, you know, trying to get from one school to another school and yeah. And then when I came back uh, to represent BYU Hawaii, it was really good to uh, meet up with folks again that uh, I worked with before. But mm -hmm. in between uh, locations, it, it was a it was a haul uh, to make sure you get there on time. And the reservation time is different from the Arizona time and Utah time. It was it was it was pretty funny. Sometimes you had Navajo time, Hopi time, and Arizona time. Exactly. <laughs> then throw in Hawaiian time. Yeah, yeah, and then they all really got mixed up. I'm going to come back to this saying later, but I want to go to the next photo here. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that one? Yeah, to my right is President Dale Tingey, my, my last state uh, mission president. To my left is Hal Taylor, who was my first mission president. Oh, okay. And it was at a gathering someplace here in Utah, and President Taylor. Uh, President Tingey worked for the AIS, American Indian Services, for lots of years. Uh, and President uh, Taylor worked, he was a faculty member of BYU. I think a religion professor or something. Yeah. But uh, when I saw him, he, he, he said to me, you knew, didn't you? <laughs> I said, yes. So I didn't tell you that story. But on, yeah. we were called, all the, all the uh, Men from the stake were called to meet with the general authorities. And on a Thursday, before the Saturday, I had a dream. And then in that dream, a dream of a guy who had to give up lots of things he liked to do. And I felt so sad for him, I started crying. I actually cried. I had tears. This guy had to change his life. All the things he loved to do, Done. Forget it. I felt so sad for him. <laughs> At the end of the dream, you know what it said? It's you. You're the guy. Wow. But I wasn't going to say, guess what? I'm the next state president. Oh, damn. I'm going to say that. I'm hoping it can be me. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, I kind of knew, but didn't want to know it. But, uh, yeah, when I went when I went to the interviews, I saw lot, lots of good men. You know, lots of good men. Yeah. Well, the Lord, the Lord knew who He needed to put in place at that time. Yeah, to be able to 
reach out to the members and to at the same time work with the brethren at the church in order to get uh, some of the things in place, the the mission home, the churches, and uh, and the stake all together. So it was meant to be. We did uh, during the during my first uh, stake time. We did uh, establish uh, chapels throughout the reservation. Yeah. We did get better housing for missionary couples. We did have better buildings for uh, elders, missionaries too. Before that, they were li living in old trailers, you know, and it, it was sad. So yeah, yeah. To the brethren and saying, we need to do better for people who serve on the reservation. And sure enough, boy, they came by and built buildings, built the way it is today. Yeah, and they stand out. I know when I come to the reservation, you can just tell the church buildings and the chapels and the state centers, they just stand out in the community. So it's nice to see them. And each one has a history, but I'll tell you later on some, some other day. Okay. So I think we're going to do our, our last picture here, and then I'm going to then ask you some questions about education. But this is when you were a, a state, I mean, I'm sorry, a student body president? Or yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm giving the speech, you know. I, I, see, a lot of times I don't want to do it, but a lot of people say, hey, you, you need to give a speech. So I'm talking about the future. <laughs> Well, that site, which is going to be the student center, you know, which which is yeah. really needed, you know, to improve services and all. So that that was my short talk about what was going to transpire. All that mm -hmm. background is where the building stands today. Yeah, I, I moved here from Samoa when I was in 1971, and I was about nine at the time. I remember seeing these uh, trees in the back. There was all open field and rugby field. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, and then they were working on uh, constructions and stuff like that. So it's nice mm -hmm. to see this photo again. <laughs> I can't believe it. Well, when you come to visit campus, you're going to be shocked as uh, so many things uh, that are built around campus. We're going to have to give you a tour, and uh, you know, you and your family be able to explain all the different things that are on campus right now. Well, I went to visit one time, and. Um... I was so happy and also sad at the same time they, they changed the weight room. It's no longer under the bleachers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they actually have a space for it with a roof. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I want to go back to this, uh, Ed, and uh, I want to ask you a couple of questions in regards to your experience with education. As part of our podcast, is make, uh, we, we want to make sure we reach out to students, especially in the reservations to explain about opportunities that are here at BYU Hawaii, not only to apply and come to BYU Hawaii, but we also have resources, scholarships and funding to be able to provide for yeah. students that come from uh, the reservation to attend BYU Hawaii. But I remember you talking, uh, talking extensively about your coaching experience. And this is one of the saying I wanted to share with our audience today that you put up and you said the most accurate indicator of successful coaching is found in the lives of the athlete, not in the numbers on the scoreboard. And I thought that was very telling of the work that you do there. And I say that because many of those that you have coached and worked with through the 50 years in education are still in contact with you. And yeah. I find that very fascinating that they did not forget you. They didn't forget what you said. So... That was really important. Well, I, I really believe that. Um, I I was fortunate again. I never applied. For, I never applied for any coaching job or administration job. But I was a head coach, so you know I had to develop my own system. And the system was to develop the person first, develop their self worth. You know, like a missionary. Yeah. You know, so although I was I was a, t a coach, administrator, and school teacher, I still felt that missionary zeal. You know, others came to the teaching field highly professional through academia. I came to teach with a different perspective of this is our children of Lehi. Mm -hmm. promise. And I want to be part of that without preaching it. I want to I want to apply it through different ways that is more uh, compassionate to them because they're children. 
I'm not going to yell and scream because I've, I've coached where I've seen and heard coaches yelling and putting down the players and calling them losers, you know, and all the El vulgarity you <laughs> yeah. can imagine and thinking, man, he's trying to build up his voice by doing that. No, we don't do that. Yeah. So uh, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful for CCH. I'm grateful for my mission. It gave me a foundation on which I based my teaching, my administration, and my coaching. And you know, to, to make a long story short, I was successful in coaching. Uh -huh. you know, I was inducted to the Hall of Fame, uh, you know, undefeated seasons, uh, beat, it, beat every team in the conference. He that never, nobody could do before. Wow. But it was not through yelling and screaming. I was, in fact, they, they was laughing. They would, when I first started my system, they said, you're too soft. <laughs> don't win games like that. <laughs> yeah, guess what? We beat them all. Yeah. To a game, I had 11 players. Uh -huh. Went to a team that had 42 players. When we came on the field, people were laughing. <laughs> guess what? Uh, End of the game, 40 to 21. That's amazing. That's amazing of what you've done through the years. Now, when you graduated from Church College of Hawaii, you majored in history. Is that correct? And and is that what you were teaching for? Yeah, well, that was the easiest major. <laughs> I couldn't do that. you were teaching at the reservation uh, in high school there? Pardon me? Is that what you were teaching? At yeah, the I taught history, um, uh, political science, psychology, and uh, character education and Navajo studies. I taught Navajo mm -hmm. yeah. Navajo studies. Wow. Didn't, didn't know that I was... From Hawaii, they thought I was an Yeah. <laughs> and then I, 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 and I, I thought so. Long, yeah, I thought so long that I, I would teach my students' grandkids. I say, yeah, I wow. know, man. Really? Yeah. Wow. And they go home and they go home and you ask. And they come back next day. You're right. My grandma said you were his coach. <laughs> wow, that's an amazing story. I remember the first time I started working at Eastern Arizona College. And I went to Tuba City for a uh, you know a college fair with all the other representatives in Arizona universities, and uh, I met Mitch Crowley and and all those guys from back Dr. home. Yeah, 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 I met all of them, and they said, "Hey, you need to go see this guy named Ed Tano." I said, "Who's that?" He said, "He's from Wahiwa. If you see him, he looks like an Indian, but he's actually a Portuguese from Wahiwa." And I said, yeah, "Okay." <laughs> So I didn't have a chance to meet you when I was working there, but uh, during these recent years when I came to the reservation, I was really pleased and happy to be able to team up with you because I know that wherever I went, I, I mentioned your name to some of those individuals and they were very, they put you in high regards and uh, they were very <laughs> helpful, helpful to me and things that I needed. So I was really grateful for that. So I'm going to continue using your name, Ed. I know you're not <laughs> be able to uh, do our work oh, so man. i know we have talked about uh, you know a lot of the good things you did in education there and i also asked you a couple of days ago if there's a message that you might be able to share in Marco with the uh, students that might be listening or parents to uh, you know talk about the importance of investment in education well let me say it in english first okay CCH, BYU Hawaii campus was prophetically established by David O. Marquet. His prophecy has been fulfilled and continues on to this day and to this moment. So I invite all of you to consider going to BYU Hawaii campus if you want a true and complete education. It's, it's a place where it gave me hope where everybody else told me, forget it, it's not, it's not for you. But BYU Hawaii gave me hope. The old CCH gave me hope. And uh, so I would say that to anyone I talked to today, and I talked to some of my former students about uh, the scholarship program, and they're interested, so I'm gonna go back and talk to them about that today. And so I'm gonna say a few words in Navajo. Okay. Okay, sure. So she kissed Edo Tansi, Caesar Donald Linigi, 
do at eke do ashi kenda no linigi di kodo bene hechi hazigi do shade tanigi ba ken sen ai si aro kadeya bio yu hawaii campus bayashi do le Askla di na khaye da di ko e ishka di ba kin sen do ba shit ko jo di orta ya te ba sis ke sala hala be orta ba da orta igi dan linigi ni jonigo shit ndashnish aro asto orta binat ani the president a jo shit ya shti Dia yo ba ba shir ho jo do ba e sa ba kien sin. Si kis o hai yu i isla. Do din dis ji go a yo be dash ni. A jan si asla di na kha ye da nde. Aro si ban sesko di BYU Hawaii campus wo yehi gi ni jona go ba haz a. This school has made me strong and i felt and i felt like home i i made many friends good people i still think about them today all of them i don't know where they are, i don't know where they are <laughs> but i am the best because at church college you can make very good friends there because you're so close you know each other well so for this i'm very grateful so in Navajo, they would say I see ba kien nissen, I'm very thankful for it. Ma kode. Ma, the guy from Wahiwa. Yeah, from Wahiwa, man. <laughs> from the park. <laughs> yeah, wow. I am so, uh, I'm so proud of you, Ed. I'm so amazed at uh, the accomplishment that you've done so far. And we're grateful for the example that you set for our alumni, not only Church College of Hawaii, but our BYU Hawaii alumni, and um, grateful for the work that you've done in education. So the rest of us will carry on the work and be able to share the information about BYU Hawaii, the blessings of coming to school here when we go to the reservation, and be able to uh, invite them to come and be able to uh, receive the same experience and spiritual experience, educational experience that they can get. Yeah. Okay. So we're grateful to you. We're grateful to you for all your example and uh, also very grateful to your wife and your kids, the commitment that you folks made uh, all those years to be on the reservation in order to perform your work, to perform your calling and be able to uh, continue to help students in uh, uh, Navajo and the Hopi Nations uh, reservation. And you know, during that time I, I taught, I did not live in the best housing conditions. But my focus was on the work. Yeah. And so that's how I thought about it. It's, I mean, when you gotta do your duct tape and double it so lizards don't come in, the house, <laughs> you, you know, you know what you live in, right? Yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was fun. Uh, I didn't I didn't care about the housing so much as much as the <laughs> serve, right? Right, right, right. Well, we are really appreciate your time. We appreciate you, your wife Sarah, and your children. Thank you for taking the time up from uh, your family uh, this afternoon to join us. Uh, we have been really enriched during these Friday broadcasts from our alumni, sharing of their experience and sharing their motivational message to help uh, students and to also help other alumni uh, wherever they might be. So I wanna thank you for your time and uh, we're gonna take you off the stream here and if you can just wait, I just got, got to do some announcements and then uh, we'll uh, talk before we close out. Is that okay? Yeah, okay, Mega. Okay, level of so all right, thank you so much. Thank you all of those of you that have joined us this afternoon for our uh, Okele, uh video podcast. And thank you again to Ed Tano and Sarah Tano and, and their wonderful family. Just a couple of things. Uh, every Monday, we'll also have a Mentor Monday podcast that is actually, it's actually facilitated by one of our students uh, here at, uh, in our Hokele department. 
This is focusing on uh, talking with our alumni to help our students with careers. So they talk, uh, our alumni will talk about careers they're in after they graduated from BYU Hawaii and what they're doing now. So every Monday, uh, we have that uh, Mentoring Monday uh, podcast. The other thing that we're starting also is that every second Friday of the month, we are going to dedicate that podcast to uh, a BYU alumni chapter. So every month we'll hear from a chapter, uh, whether it's in the Pacific or Asia or here or in the mainland. So the first one, uh, the first uh, president of the ch alumni chapter we're going to have on uh, on the second uh, Friday is our own uh, Richie Norton, who will be joining us to be able to talk about the Hawaii chapter here and what we're planning to do and so forth. Uh, and then last but not le least, uh, we also want to encourage people to uh, be able to get into our Ohana network. So that way we you can update your profile. And the benefit to that is as you update your pro profile with your email, we can send you the newsletter, we can send you events and updates of what's happening here at the university. And then also at the same time, you can connect with other alumni and most importantly, connect with our students that are currently here. So in, you know, in order for us not to worry so much about confidentiality um, process, but when you are in the Ohana network, uh, it allows you to then communicate and correspond with each other and help our students and so forth. So we'll continue to work on that and help you to uh, get online and be able to update our uh, update your profile on Ohana Network, okay? Thank you so much everybody for joining us today. Thank you for your time. Uh, these broadcasts are also uh, pre-recorded so you can always watch it later as well. Grateful to uh, our guests today and grateful to Becky and Droyce and many others that have done a lot of the work in the background uh, to make sure this moves forward. So thank you for joining us this Aloha Friday afternoon. Have a wonderful weekend and we will see you next Friday, same time, three o'clock, Hawaii Standard Time. Aloha. <laughs>